The third issue of the Age of Republic series was centered around Obi-Wan Kenobi in between The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. Anakin is still a fairly new Padawan at this point, but having entered the Jedi Order at the age of nine, he is much older than the younglings he has to learn alongside, and he's feeling out of place. Obi-Wan is also feeling unsure of himself as a teacher. He wasn't expecting to have a student so quickly after being granted the rank of Jedi Knight, and he also thought he would have Qui-Gon around if he ever needed advice. When Kenobi is given a mission by the Council, it becomes clear that he has yet to take Anakin on any mission outside of the Temple. Obi-Wan doesn't think he has adequately prepared Anakin, and Anakin fears that Obi-Wan doesn't want him around. Yoda has some words with Kenobi and says that if Anakin is neglected, he will become a poorly trained and therefore dangerous Jedi. So Obi-Wan takes his Padawan to the planet Dalinor to recover a Jedi holocron found by Republic archaeologists. When they do, pirates arrive hoping to steal something of value. Kenobi defends the dig until Anakin is taken captive, but he easily uses the Force to knock out the pirate leader and the rest of them retreat. On the trip home, Master and Apprentice talk about their training so far. Obi-Wan assures Anakin that he was the one who wasn't ready, having felt inadequate as a teacher. He feels guilt for Qui-Gon's death and didn't want to see something similar happen to his student. He vows not to let his fears get in the way of their training again. Like the two issues before it, this installment of Age of Republic has a lot to unpack. Starting back at the beginning, we got a few short looks into Obi-Wan's past as a youngling and Padawan. I really perked up when I saw that, which just reminds me how excited I am to get a better look at his training with Qui-Gon in the Master and Apprentice book later this year. But as Obi-Wan considers his role as a teacher, he specifically notes that Qui-Gon was very different than he was, and we see a glimpse of him defying the Council, which we already know he was notorious for. But I wonder if that brief call-out was significant. A running theme in the Age of Republic series so far revolves around the failures of the Jedi Order at the time. I think one of Obi-Wan's weaknesses is that he puts too much faith in established institutions. He chastises Qui-Gon for going against the Council and the Phantom Menace. We never see him openly defy them. In this comic, he only grows because Yoda first gives him a little push. On the flip side, he does admit to Anakin that the Council is right about many things, but they aren't perfect. I think Anakin is helping him grow into his own person without having to rely on his elders for everything. Anakin is teaching him as much as he teaches Anakin. Later in the issue, we can see a very subtle difference in their philosophies surrounding the Force. As Obi-Wan defends the dig site, he doesn't leave any bodies behind. He destroys weapons and he force pushes, but everyone can walk away from the encounter. Anakin, on the other hand, uses the Force once to throw rocks at someone. I think that can definitely be considered as self-defense in that moment, but I also think it's interesting Anakin's one use of the Force was more aggressive than all of Obi-Wan's actions. Three issues in and the Age of Republic series continues to impress me, offering up a lot more to think about than most Star Wars one-shot comics. I love how each has told a unique story about a different character, but still they have been connected by theme. I highly recommend this series so far. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out our Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.